This video is going to teach you all you need to know about the lasso tool in Photoshop, what it is, where to find it and how to use it. Don't go away. Callister of Barry Callister Photography, founder and creator of Photographer's Freedom, giving you the time, gear and skills to be the best photographer you can be. Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for watching this video today. Here on my channel I do photography tutorials, Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials just like this one, photography gear reviews and other photography related things. So if that sounds like stuff that you're into, consider subscribing and ding the notification bell. Right now, let's get into the content. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I have this image open here. If you want to download this image and follow along, there's a link in the video description. Now imagine that for some reason we want to select all these vegetables and this plate. Um, now we might want to add some effects to them separately from the background, or we may want to remove them from the background. Whatever we want to do, the lasso tool is a great way to select a subject like this one. So you can find your lasso tool over here on the left hand side of the screen in the tools menu. It's the little icon that looks like a lasso, strangely enough. And now inside of there, you actually have three different lasso tools. You have the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. Now this tutorial is only going to deal with the lasso tool. I'm going to do tutorials about the polygonal and the magnetic in the near future and they will be linked up in the cards up the top of the video when they're done. So with your cursor over the icon, just left click on your mouse and that will select your lasso tool. Now you'll see that up on the left hand side here we have some options up the top. So I'll run through those right now. So this first one here with the lasso tool icon with the little arrow next to it, if you click that arrow, this will open up your presets drop down. So this is where you save any presets for the tool. So presets are just a fancy way of saying your favorite settings. Yeah, so if you find some settings for the tool that work really good for a certain situation, you might wanna save those as a preset. And you can do that by clicking this little icon there and you can name it there as you can see. Or you can also do it from this settings drop down up here and just do new tool preset in there. And there's also a lot of other controls in there that I won't go into right now. They're pretty all self-explanatory. Next along here, this is these next four icons with the squares. This controls how the tool does what it does. The first one is new selection. This is what the lasso tool defaults to when you first open it. Then you have add to selection. So that obviously adds to the selection you've already done. Then you have subtract from selection. That subtracts from a selection that you've already done. And then you have intersect with selection. And I'll talk about that in a little while. Next along here, we have your feather slider. What this does is it blurs the edges of your selection, softens the edges, makes them bleed into the background a bit more. I will talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and this has a pixel level here. You can clip, left click with your mouse and drag that up or down to change the level of the feathering. I'm just going to leave that at one pixel for now. Next, you have your anti-alias checkbox. Now what aliasing is, is this stair stepping or jagged edging on things that you find like when you download an image off the internet and it's not very high resolution you'll get that jagged edging on things what anti-aliasing does is it attempts to remove those sharp edges so that you get a much more smooth edge on it and that's what anti this anti-aliasing checkbox will do with your selection so i suggest you turn that on Next, we have a button that says select a mask. I'm not going to go into this now because I've done a video about that and I'll link that up in the cards up top. It's a whole big can of worms we're not going to open here. So check out that video and you can learn everything you need to know about select a mask. So to start selecting something with the lasso tool, all you do is simply move the tip of the arrow there to where you want to start your selection. Left click with your mouse, hold it and drag 
the outline of what you want to select. And to close off the selection or complete it, you simply drag back around to the start and let go. You don't have to go all the way back. You can see that Photoshop will snap it in back to the start for you. Now, because the lasso tool defaults to new selection up here, if you now try to extend this selection, one of two things is going to happen. Either if you click outside of the area, your, your original selection is going to disappear and you're going to think, where the heck is my selection gone? Or if you click inside of the selection, you're going to drag your selection around the screen. So to prevent either of those things from happening, what you have to do is either come up here and change it to add to selection, or you can actually just press shift on your keyboard and you can see the little plus comes up next to the icon there and you can continue to add to your selection and just drag it back and around and Photoshop will fill it in for you. Now one thing I had forgot to mention is I always suggest that you zoom in before you start selecting. So I can do that with the scroll wheel on my mouse. You can also do that by pressing Control or Command and using the plus or minus keys on your numeric keyboard. Plus will zoom in, minus will zoom out. Or you can come over here and use the zoom tool if you really want. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and you can see in this area here, I've gone way too far outside of what we want to select. So I mentioned a second ago that you can press and hold shift to add to your selection. To take away from your selection, you can either come up here and select subtract from selection, or you can leave it on new selection and simply hold alt or option and you'll see the lasso tool has a little minus next to it now and then you can drag in here and take away this now because we're taking away from our selection we need to drag this to the outside because we're removing the background so we need to drag it into the background and also up here around the the head of this pumpkin here i need to drag that out of there and there's probably a little bit in here that we don't need. Just drag that out and drag that out there. So holding Alt or Option will take away from your selection. So now I'll explain intersect with selection that I didn't explain to you before. Now because we've already got a selection here, if I select intersect with selection up here and I make a new selection, so I'll just drag around here, for example. When I lift my mouse button, what I will be left with is the section in between. So just watch what happens when I lift my mouse button. So we're left with just where those two selections crossed over each other or intersect. So that's what intersect with selection does. And if I undo that, you can also do this, you don't have to come way up here and click that, you can actually hold shift and alt or option at the same time and you can see the little cross come up next to the lasso icon there and you can, that will intersect for you as well. Now I want to explain the feathering to you which was the other thing from up the top here that I didn't really get to explain. So at the moment it's set for one pixel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly show you what the edge of this selection looks like by clicking on select and mask up here and that will take us into the select and mask window here. Now, as I said, I'm not gonna explain this too much because I've done the other video on it. Just uh, go and have a look at that. But if I zoom in here, you can see that the edges of our selection are quite sharp there's not much bleeding happening at the edges so what i'll do is i'll cancel out of that i will turn the feathering up to say about 10 pixels and i will select a little bit more over this side here somewhere we'll select whoops on outside but that's okay then i'll click select and mask again now see the difference there so over here, this, this is our one pixel feathering, and here I have the 10 pixel feathering. So you can see how it's a lot softer at the edges and it starts to bleed into the background. So that's what feathering does. It makes the edges of your selection nice and soft and it can help to blend things in a bit better and make them look a bit more realistic when you're putting them on different backgrounds and such. 
So what I'll do here is I'll just go in and I'll finish off this selection. I'll just select the rest of our plate here. I'm just going to do this very roughly, guys, because I don't want this tutorial to be three hours long. So we'll go around here. Oh, that's a bit too rough. So again, just selecting little bits and pieces, not major areas in case I make a big mistake and I need to go back and fix it up, which is not really a problem here because I'm doing this roughly anyway. But So I'm just holding shift here and just clicking and dragging. I might hold alt there and just get rid of that bit there. Holding shift again, coming around the edge of our plate here. Holding alt again, just getting rid of that bit there. So there we go, that's not a bad selection. It's a little bit rough. If I had more time, I would make it a little bit better. Now, a couple of things I did want to say, once you do have a selection, you can press and hold control or command, and you can see the little scissors pop up there next to your arrow. If you click and left click and drag with your mouse, you can actually cut that selection out and drag it around within your document. This would be a little bit more helpful if we had selected something smaller, but, and what is left behind there is actually a transparent background. I'll just undo that. I'll unlock the background here and when I move it again, you'll see the checkerboard there that, that tells us that that's now transparent part of the document. Another fancy trick that you can do here is hold Control and Alt or Command and Option. And you can see the arrow doubles. There's a black one and a white one. What this will do is make a copy of your selection that you can drag around your document. So that's a really quick way of making copies of things if you need to. So I'll just control Z to undo that. So just a couple of tips there. And one final tip that I wanted to mention to you is a different way to view your selection. Now this is called quick mask. Over here, you have this little rectangle icon with a dotted circle inside of it. If you click that, you'll see you can view your selection with a color overlay on the top of it there. And if you double click the icon down there, you can actually change the color to whatever you like in there. You can also change the opacity of the color, so how transparent it is. And you can select whether it will show the masked areas or the selected areas. So that is, um, at the moment it's set to selected areas. So the color is telling us what areas we have selected. So. That is a really cool way of being able to view your selection as a mask. And to exit out of quick mask mode, all you gotta do is click the icon again, or you just press Q on your keyboard and you'll go back to your marching ants. So that, my friend, is all you need to know about the lasso tool. As I mentioned earlier, I will be doing videos about the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool soon as well, so look out for those. Perhaps you should subscribe and ding that notification bell so you don't miss those, huh? If you like this video, hit the like button and leave a comment if you have any questions or if you're just feeling chatty. Until next time, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography and Photographer's Freedom. Get out there, take some wicked shots, and I'll see you soon.